Welcome once again to the Daily Connection. Let's ask God for His blessing. Our Father, what a joy it is to open up Your Word. Would You bless us as we see what You're doing for Your glory in the future. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, we have finally reached chapter 17 of the book of Revelation, and we're looking at the destruction of Babylon, the destruction of Babylon. And what we have in chapters 17 and 18 is going to be a display of the utter destruction of the Antichrist empire. Now, remember, his empire of Babylon is both uh, religious and political. The focus here in chapter 17 is on the uh, false religion of the Antichrist empire. So let's jump right in it. We're going to go through uh, the first 14 verses, but we'll be able to get through it. There's not a lot of commentary needed. So let's begin with verse 1 of chapter 17. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute, who is seated on many waters. Now, this prostitute uh, is Babylon and most specifically the false religious system. So when we see the prostitute, think of Babylon, most specifically the false religious system. Look at verse 2. With whom, so this is the prostitute, with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality and with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth have become drunk. Now, harlotry and uh, or fornication is often used in the Word of God to speak of false religion, and that is the case here. Uh, And this is the false religious system that uh, the Antichrist uh, sets up. So let's now look at verse 3. And he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting, now listen to this, on the scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names. Now this is the same beast of chapter 13 and verse 1, which is none other than the Antichrist. And again, the woman represents the false religion of the Antichrist. So let's continue reading verse 3. Full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. Verse 4, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And then listen to this, verse 5. On her head was written a name of mystery. Babylon the great, mother of prostitutes and of the earth's abominations. Verse 6. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints. That is uh, the murder, the martyrdom of those in the tribulation who would not, will not receive uh, the mark of the beast, will not fall under the Antichrist uh, spell. Well, many of them are martyred. So it says the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I marveled greatly. Verse 7. But the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast with the seven heads and ten horns that carries her. So let's see what this mystery is. Verse 8. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. And the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and is not and is to come. Now I remind you, we talked earlier that the Antichrist will either falsely claim, he will claim that he died uh, from wounds and therefore he will fake a resurrection or God will grant Satan the ability uh, to raise him from the dead. Uh, All of this is part of God's judgment on unbelievers. So I I don't know which one is going to happen there. The way the wording is, In the book of Revelation, I tend to think he actually did die, uh, and God allowed Satan the power to bring him back to life, which has the effect of causing uh, unbelievers to worship him. And so it's part of judgment, God's judgment upon them. Now look at verse 9. He says, This calls for a mind with wisdom. 
The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. Verse 10. They are the seven kings, five of whom have fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain only a little while. Next, as for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven, and it goes to destruction. Now, we need not get lost here and confused in all this information about uh, the numbers of kings. Uh, they are world empires, remember, and the point is that the Antichrist is the final world leader, the one who everyone is looking up to. He is number seven. You could say he's number eight, but he was also number seven before he faked or actually did uh, come back to life. So that's where the seven and the eight comes in here. Verse 12. And the horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. Now, these are of one mind, verse 13. They are of one mind, and they hand over their power and authority to the beast. Now, this too we have seen before, right? Uh, these are the other world leaders who... Uh, are under the Antichrist. They are aligning with the Antichrist. They're going to go uh, to Armageddon to uh, do battle with uh, Israel. Now look at verse 14. They will make war on the Lamb, and the Lamb will conquer them. Don't you love that? The Lamb will conquer them, for He is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those with Him are called and chosen and faithful. Now, this speaks, of course, of what Jesus is going to do at the second coming. He's going to destroy the Antichrist and the other uh, world leaders who come against the woman, Israel. Now, uh, I love this description of believers, how comforting this is. Uh, we are called, we are chosen, and we are faithful. Praise God. 